Hello fellow old schoolers and welcome to another recorded match from the Tournament of the Mountain of Madness in old school magic here. And um, yeah, we're in the top 8 and the winner from this particular match will go into the finals. In the last few videos we followed uh, the top 8 and we saw skies going head to head with disco trolls and advancing through the tournament and we also saw control bots beating troll box in their uh, top 8 match and the top 8 continues here with skies advancing and I am here <laughs> on composition A in the top 8 uh, so we're gearing up for this uh, epic battle here uh, just before we do that let's take a quick look at the decks the previous match where we saw skies going up against disc controls I had a, an approximation of the deck he played uh, namely the winner deck from uh, another tournament um, but I, I was, I, I mentioned that he was influenced by that deck, but I didn't know exactly what his deck uh, was like because he didn't post a picture back then. But uh, yeah, since then he's posted the picture to me, so we have it here. Um, and this is actually a bit different. It's way more aggressive than I thought. Um, having a full playset of Mahomoti Jins here and four Sarah Angels as, as well. So a controlled Skies variant here that has a. Uh, full counter package and uh, obviously fully powered here and uh, it can sideboard moats in after sideboard uh, it will likely be pretty good against me uh, just to keep the juice and gins at bay also a couple of books to go more of the control route the deck is all in all uh, have a blue and white core with a tiny splash of black and red we have a uh, black for the money two time mind twist obviously and then we have a single fireball for red uh, and we also have in his sideboard uh, access to a couple of red blasts uh, he can sideboard in. But mainly blue and red here. The uh, strategy here will be to gain control, get out a big fat beater like a Mahomoti Jin, protect that with your counter magic and then punch face uh, with it. And he's actually a pretty good creature against Jusum Jins, Mahomoti Jins, because they are 5-6. So they can keep the Jins uh, at bay if you get them down in time, but it will require a lot of mana to get the big boys, the big fly boys, uh, into the field here but um, if they do um, yeah the composition a will have to make use of all of its sort of plowshares to get rid of those so this is the deck as for composition a we have it here it is a, a classic a classical deck on this channel uh, we've seen it a bunch especially last year um, sort of like a mid-range deck uh, sometimes playing all the colors uh, but mainly being black. Um, all the dual lands uh, produce black mana in this iteration. I think uh, it doesn't play green, instead it has a Sulk and other Swamp King instead of the regrowth. And uh, yeah, uh, trying to win with big creatures like Jusum Jins, Sink of Empires and also annoying Spectres, um, the Hypnotic Spectres here, very good against control and combo decks. Not so good against uh, burn decks, but still uh, a, a viable creature I think. Um, it has a lot of uh, removal, like sinkholes, soft plowshares, disenchants, lightning bolts, stuff like that, to uh, remove blockers, and so the Jusum Jins can get in, and the Spectres can get in, and touch base. It doesn't require a lot of punches from those fellas before it's curtain call, either because uh, you take too much damage, or because the opponent loses too many cards in his hand, uh, providing Composition A with some card advantage. Uh, the second part of the deck are, uh, is Underworld Dreams, um, just another way to another attack vector on the opponent uh, and they can be comboed into Wheel of Fortune and Time Twister for big bursts of damage. When you play those uh, Composition A will like, rearm itself with creatures doing a ton of damage to the opponent through the Underworld Dreams as well. So uh, yeah the uh, basic philosophy here sort of like a mono black uh, deck in it uh, insofar that all the mana produces black mana that makes it possible to hard cast those dark uh, those underworld dreams and i don't have to use dark rituals for them and then it just splashes into uh, all the colors i need uh, providing some a very flexible deck that can roll with the punches and uh, go different routes depending on what i want lane like destruction burn or creature uh, aggression so this is the matchup the top eight match let's get ready for the match. Composition A on the play, starting off with a bad lands here. Pretty slow start. I suppose it makes it possible to uh, 
bolt immediately. Ooh, a lot of mana on the side of uh, Skies here. Yeah, <laughs> Mux and a Soul Ring on Skies. Just land go from Composition A. Tundra coming out. Okay, tapping out immediately. Oh, Sarah Angel, turn two here. Brutal stuff. It's just a, a wee little spectra here the problem with the serendil is she doesn't tap so she can just attack with impunity here and still block that spectra uh, if needs be coming in here for four obviously i'm not blocking here i uh, need to remove that serendil oh mahamochi jin turn three here that artifact mana really puts the uh, the speed on skies here and look at this we don't have any white mana out of composition a so I don't have access to all my white removal. Just getting out a little flyer here as well. Two Spectres here. A ton of damage coming in. Uh, no way to remove them unless I have a bolt in hand. Keeping the Badlands untapped uh, to at least uh, show that I might have a bolt. Maybe just to uh, make, him, make him think again before he attacks, but... Most likely he'll just go all in still. It will be a two for one. Coming in for nine here. Brutal. Um, yeah. Need to buy time. I'm double blocking the Sarah Angel here uh, in an attempt to take her with me. But she solves the Plowshare as one of the uh, Spectres at block. And then uh, the Sarah Angel punches down the other Ghost. Book coming out. To take five points of damage and gain two life from that Spectre. We really need a white mana source here. Yeah, see the hand here. I remember I actually had both a balance and two sorts of plouches in hand, so packing all the answers here, but can't draw a white mana to save my life. Just a third spectra. <laughs> Straight into the meat grinder here. Trying to buy time to get a planes, uh, some draw power out. Um, yeah, he draws with the book. He wants a counter spell here. Uh, keeping two blue mana up in hand. Getting down a factory. Now attacking for nine. I blocked the... Um, Mahamochi Jin going down to 9 points of life. Next time, I'll be dead. The factories won't be able to block his flyers. Let's I get a white mana source. Nope, too little, too late. Two source of plowshares here. Uh, I show those in disgust. <laughs> but Composition A, I mean, there's a lot of demands on Composition A's uh, mana base here. And once in the blue moon, this stuff happens where you just don't get the mana you need. So. It's a bit unlucky as I had all the answers, but these things can happen uh, rarely, but they do. So we're sideboarding here and gearing up for round number two. After that brutal beatdown, I mean, unless he makes a transformation sideboard, the few minutes of this first round gives me all the intel I need. I know it is a Skies variant with two big flyers. Uh, it is a mid-range variant as well. So, uh, yeah, uh, Red Blasts. Uh, as many of them as I can get my hands on to remove counter spells, block power, and remove uh, Mahamochi Jins with one red mana. So let's brace for impact for round number two. In this semi final, water final match of the top eight. Oh, I'm mulliganing here, down to six cards in the first round. I'm on the play. City of Brass, go. Yeah, not really what I need. Okay, at least that's not as much tempo out of the other guy. Peter didn't draw a Sol Ring or Moxen uh, this time around. I don't want to see coming out. I am at a two card disadvantage here. After that mulligan and as I'm on the play, but I do have, I mean, do have the advantage of being the, act the active player. See double Tundra here, so um, yeah, he can counter at this point. I also see a time walk in his hand. Um, he might be considering playing it. No, he's tutoring here. Yeah. You're likely, I mean, you could take a mind twist or you could take a ancestor recall. With so little mana in hand, you're likely to take an ancestor recall. Another viable way would just be to get the library. If he has a full hand of seven cards um, though he knows that composition he has a bunch of lane destruction so um, that might not be the safest route for him to take okay so what does he what did he pick a seat of brass coming out slow and steady start here but the advantage 
is definitely on the and Sky still build that power. Time walking here to pull even further ahead in, in card draws and in uh, lane drops. Planes. Oh, we got a Sol Rain. Now he can get all the. It's that much easier for him to get the big boys out. Does he? Did he pick a Mind Twist actually? No, he took a book. What on earth did he side. Uh, did he tutor for? We might see an insist to recall in my end step, but he might be afraid of a red blast here. I'm keeping the city of brass untapped for now. Okay, moving in to, to just to get it here. Okay, but he insists as a as a response. I'm using the mind twist here because I don't know what he picked uh, for his card, and I know he can't counter it in this moment. Getting a book and a counter spill. Yeah, because if he if he got an untap, I wouldn't be able to mind twist. Um, he just counter me straight out, and uh, use that book in my end step, and uh, yeah, needed to. Get the punch in though it was mitigated by the ancestor recall so i didn't get i mean it just blocked the ancestor recall he gains two cards out of the ancestor recall and lost two cards here though actually it actually cost me a bit because the mind twist was also a card and now he has a brain guy so oh my yeah so all the draw power he needs here one two three four five cards um e pulling even further ahead getting a maze down did he have a land drop no, he didn't. It was a factory, but he took the factory back. So, um, no illegal plays here. Mesa Fifth and a Mux. Okay, Sink only the maze while he's tapped out. I don't want those, uh, too many of those out. And need to punch in a set while well, he doesn't have access to counter spells. But, I mean, this is a brutal situation. He's really pulling ahead here. Bunch of fast mana and all the draws in the world in an active book. Now he might twist my hand. Yeah, I did have a red blast and some white removal. Oh man, we need a draw seven here, but there's a library as well. <laughs> and he has a book to get into full range here. Now I'm getting a soul ring, don't really need that. Now he draws with the book at my end step. Yeah, he just tries to go within library range here and he'll get a bunch of... Uh, he'll get three draws a turn. Uh, forgot to take a damage from the city of brass so he does so here now he's within already within uh, draw range i think this is game this is already game i uh mind twisting my hand brain geyser and just a recall okay i'm trying to um, i mean we can try to draw a counter spell here we need to, we need to put a break on some of that draw power not the a pretty lucky um top deck draw here but okay let's it slide he might Think that the library will be enough for him or he might have another book in hand or he might not have a counter spell and he has another book in hand I, I just saw it in his hand so that that's why he doesn't waste a counter spell on it i mean it does put him behind a single draw because he can't play the library he can't play the book and draw with that and the library in my end step so at least there's that. Count your blessings, right? So at my end step, he draws with the book again. So we're back to square one here with an active library and a book. Plenty of mana, full hand. And have my twisted me for everything. Now there's a divine offering on my soul ring. Nice play. Uh, might as well just try to postpone me. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, but he, he, he can do this. I mean, why not? He draws so many cards that um, he'll just start to obliterate my, my board state and he'll recuperate uh, all his cards. Um, just going one for one here. It's viable even to disenchant that Mox Emerald um, because he's, he's pulling so far ahead. Yeah, so he do, does that here. Excellent play here. It might seem odd, but the situation calls for it. I mean, um, I can't keep up with, uh, as I only draw a single card a turn. So he attacks with both factories. I soft plowshare one of them. Uh, being down to three po three mana sources here. Okay, uh, pretty lucky. <laughs> that actually drew something that I could use. Uh, obviously, I don't believe that Spectre will survive for long. 
but um, if I can get in and pick a card, no, no, it's a soft plush around it. So going up to 16 points of life, he doesn't attack with his factory, that's a bit of a mistake. So I'm sinkholing his library of Alexandria. He counters that. Seem to be de deliberating something here. Oh, I think he wanted to. Oh, he wants to maybe draw with the library before he counters. That's fine. And then he draws with the book. Oh, is this at my end step? No, it was in his turn. Okay. So he's just drawing with the book, drawing with the library. He doesn't want to attack as much right now. Just consolidating his position here, keeping the factory back. Okay, here he comes. I mean, we need something really uh, impressive to happen here for composition here to get back into the game. I'm actually mana starved as, as, as well. Getting a Spectre out, at least. What? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what's happening here. I think we might be a bit drunk or uh, something. Strip mines my City of Brass. Then casting Wrath of God just to remove uh, the Spectre. I mean, he, he can shoot Sparrows with cannons here if, if he wants to. Um, doesn't really matter. He has so many draws and I'm down to two points of mana here. Got a Red Mox. Bring us for one. We're just laughing here because it's it's so, <laughs> it's so uneven, this board state. Okay, got a City of Brass here. Still no answer on that uh, Library of Alexandria. Now the factory coming down. And he swings. For two with his, um, with his stuff. And then he fireballs me out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, an obliteration here. Yeah, not much I could I could have done, I think. I, I don't think I had any um, play mistakes. Um, the first round, I was without a uh, white mana to remove his stuff. Um, and in the second round, I mean, it's just... Sometimes in, in old school, these things happen where you get the ball rolling, uh, get a card advantage going, and then, um, then you could just draw into even more mana, even more broken cards, and then, yeah, just... It goes out of control. I mean, if I had drawn like a draw seven with some maybe a red blast as to back up, uh, that might have been a, a game change or balance and a red blast to ban to as back up to remove his counter magic. Then the thing, then things could have stabilized, I suppose. But uh, without that, it was just really uh, trying my best to remove his stuff. But he could just go one for one, countering my stuff and obliterating my mana. So I'm out of the top eight and. Um, we have another semi-final match here coming up. Um, we saw robots uh, advancing through the tournament, and we'll see what he what he meets at the other side of the top eight here, and then we will see uh, who will meet skies in the finals of this tournament. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.